revenue back to the 2017 2018 actual level so for the local revenue piece that added 2.2 million dollars in um, and th there's a caveat to that in a second that we'll get to what we also changed from the last meeting is we received a may estimate on the state bep money and that was about two hundred thirty one thousand dollar increase in that as well so that upped our we we, we put approximately two and a half million dollars we're asking for two million two from local government or from from county and 231 from state so what we did with that is we added we went back to the keys document and we added the four related arts positions we can just go down through these but we we kind of went through and decided what was we prioritized what we had moved back out of the keys of the 1.4 million and came back and added back in several positions the other thing that changed that we realized as we were doing this scott Gaines had let me know that we've got several guidance counselors that we pay a, an outside contract amount during the summer and that had not been accounted for so we added approximately seventy thousand plus benefits for, to cover that payment for those folks so We added back in the art teacher at Baker. That was one of the four that we originally added in. The art teacher at Howell. The music teacher at Brown. Can I comment? Oh, there was 571,000 more in the teacher line item. So those four teachers you had, so what other teaching positions yeah. were added? Um, and again, let me explain, as we've been adding and subtracting positions through all this process, everything has been dumped into the 71,100 teacher line item. So that's where we've been Understand. tracking it. Um, We added the 12,005 at Mount Pleasant High School for work-based learning. We added the $15,000 back in for jobs for Tennessee grads. The art teacher at Kolioka. The two instructional coaches um, because of the Title II reduction. The two tech specialists the contract administrator and we had when we had made our original cuts we had cut two of the three building operators out and this is adding those two back in to give us a total of three so that basically gets us down to the 663,000 that we added back in Well, when we took we took all of the GP out, we took out 1.4 million. Now, the caveat on the revenue. Um, when I took the revenue back to the 16, 17 actual levels, I did not increase it. There's 187,500 that the county has already said will increase in property taxes. I did not include that. So if we want to do that during this work session, we can add that revenue back in and decide what else we want to pull back in to cover that. I think the suggestion, one of the first ones would be the district RTI coordinator would be probably one position so that would leave about one hundred and twenty six thousand left to add back in
Um, what about some things that are on the keys budget that we could put in GP? Well, another question I had when you when you put in the art and music positions, I thought we budgeted positions at an average of sixty one thousand each. We did. But these this comes to two forty three. So it's on your worksheet on uh, that's with benefits and everything added in. That's with the insurance I thought, retirement. I thought 61 Six. was with benefits and all. Was an average with benefits. I, I don't know. But that's what we've been working with. Right. The 61,000 is including all the benefits, so it's a total. Okay, so. Are you looking at the keys okay, document? we're good. Okay. Mr. Bates. Mr. Parliament, did you also say, um, I think you provided some information to us earlier, that your calculations for the 3% raise may have been underestimated? Right. As we were putting that in, we had not put in the um, FICA, Social Security, and retirement in that amount. So okay. that, that we used part of that revenue increase to cover that as well. So even though we're, it looks like we're cutting this current proposal that we've got, Looks like it's cutting out about 739,000 out of the keys from the GP lines, but some of that cut got eaten up by additional amounts for the raises. And the guidance counselors, that was about 77,000 with okay. that and benefits. And then the rest of it is the six, 663 from the keys that we added back in. Okay. But the bottom line is this current proposal that we got uh, you all have reduced our local funding in this current proposal by almost 850000 From the last one? From what we originally proposed to the commission. I'll have to go back and pull that one. That was 3067, and we're now proposing... Yeah, about 800000 Okay. A little, little over 800000 All right. So this is actually a pretty substantial cut, almost a, a million dollars that we're cutting out of the budget. Um, but some of that cut has been offset by we've got some additional information from the state. Correct. As, so we may get a little bit more state revenue than anticipated. So that's have to offset some of that local funding cut. And then there's also another line item where you've – got some additional more up-to-date information as far as revenue that's also helped to Correct. offset some of that as we dropped in the May actual numbers there was a there was an adjustment last year because we were using actual numbers last year for the months that we hadn't hit yet and there was a negative adjustment last year so when we through our actual main numbers in, it flipped that back out. So it so was more a net up to date information. Right. So, so it was accurate. a net okay. 350, $360,000 pickup. Okay. My, there's been a lot of discussion about textbooks and about some supplies for K through two. Could we add some of those supplies that are needed for that with that money? Well, we won't know what that is yet. Uh, Beverly Miller is going to be meeting with representatives from K through two throughout the summertime to see what they currently have. Um, it's also come to light that they they have textbooks. K through two has textbooks. Um, they've had them for quite some time. So um, so they they have resources in the classroom. But what we're going to do is meet with them to determine what more targeted resources we can offer. But we still have a textbook budget line out of about four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we're still okay in that area. Yes, ma'am. Do you have some more, Mr. Bates? Uh, yeah, I did want to also go back. The $850,000 that you all, looks like you're cutting out of local revenue uh, as far as a reduction. It's my understanding that that number, what ultimately what our current, this proposal is, what it's based upon as far as sales tax revenue is for next year is based upon what we've actually received this year that's correct all right so projecting out for next year there's no growth added at all it's it's an assumption of a no growth economy that the economy flat correct. lines and correct. so the funding that we would be requesting to the commission would be just to assume that the same thing comes in next fiscal years that did this year that's right no increase that's right 
Um, and then as far as the property tax, I think this current proposal that you all have is actually less than what the county has estimated That's our correct. property tax to be. Is that right? By about by about one eighty seven five. Okay, so roughly one hundred and eighty thousand. I I do think that if the county, if the commission has their people have estimated what uh, our property tax revenue is going to be of a certain amount, I think just being conservative, we ought to at least use the county's estimate. We shouldn't mm -hmm. under that. And so if we got about a hundred, another $180,000, that may allow us to put some of those key items back in right. as far as the GP goes. Because I will say that I've got some reservations. I, I, this current proposal in, keeps the 3% raise. It keeps all the art and music teachers, but it's taking out some of those RTI positions and problem-based learning positions. And I, I do have some reservations about that. But if we did, if we added that, roughly 180,000 back in using the county's own number, we might be able to put some of those positions back in, so. Sure. Uh, I, Mr. Bates has a good idea, a uh, good point. Uh, we need those positions. And if the county says by their estimates the money is there, whether it wage, raises the maintenance of effort or, or what, again, like I said last meeting, we're here for the students to teach the to have students do the best we can. And RTI and all of those programs that, that you're cutting, if they weren't important, they wouldn't be there in the first place. So I, I would go along with Mr. Bates and let's see if we can add some of those in and use the, the county's estimates on the tax revenue. Sure. Can you do that tonight so we can vote on it tonight? Yes, we can. Thank you. <laughs> I do like Mr. Bates' suggestion, but can we go back to Ms. Kinzer's question? Okay. I have heard such a consistent message from K through two teachers that they don't have materials. And I can't say that I've ever heard the word textbook from them, but like all of a sudden, like, oh, they do have textbooks and they've had them for a long time. Like, this isn't fitting with everything else I've heard, so I just need clarification because if they don't have materials, it's a very consistent message, and I think we may have the opportunity to add something in. But can you please clarify? Yes. Uh, so, so what I did is I asked Miss Miller to dig in and 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 tell me what what materials do K through two currently have that's been on the adopt textbook cycle. Um, what she was able to tell me is that grades one and two um, have a grammar and writing book, kindergarten first and second grade have um uh no that's esl excuse me handwriting k1 and 2 as handwriting mathematics has k1 and 2 uh elementary art k1 and 2 elementary music k1 and 2 spelling k1 and 2 reading textbooks Houghton mifflin k1 and 2 Social studies, K-1 and 2, and science books, K-1 and 2. Okay. They all schools have. Okay, then I just need some explanation where the disconnect is. Like teachers that are level five teachers, mm -hmm. tremendous teachers, incredible people, yeah. are consistently telling me they have no materials. So like, where's the disconnect? And that's one of the reasons why Ms. Miller's gonna be meeting with representatives of K-1 and 2 from almost every school to find out what we do have, what we don't have, what we need to supplement, because we don't, we don't want to go out and buy resources. Like, we don't want to go buy manipulative kits and give them to K-1 and 2 teachers, and they may have manipulative kits already. So, so we're literally digging in with principals per school to find out what K-1 and 2 teachers have and don't have, and then how can we use textbook money to supply them the materials that they don't have. Okay. That's what we're going to be working on this summer. I am all for logic and efficient mm -hmm. use of resources. So yep. that's what you're describing, not duplicating, yes. finding out what we've had. However, and this may be pushing pause on budget <clears throat> and kind of crossing over, but given that this is the time that we can ask for stuff, we need to get to the bottom of this. I do feel like since the beginning of the year, I've heard the very same consistent message from this group, K through two teachers. This is now summer. Mm -hmm. School will start in six weeks. Yes. I am. I just need you to hear my voice that I am disappointed that this has been a consistent theme for a year. And now six weeks out, we're actually digging in. Mm -hmm. I do not think this is efficient and good for our kids because this is the time that we would 
you know, we can ask, but we're still not even sure what we've got. And like, I've brought this message. Teachers consistently have told me that they've told Mrs. Miller. Like, I just need you to hear me that for efficiency, mm -hmm. to use our funds logically, we should have done better than this. We shouldn't be sitting here six weeks out from school at the very end of budget. And like, you just gave me a list. If if we have, I mean, it sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. Why are people telling me they have no materials? I, I don't know. I can't answer that question right now. And this this is the same list that I sent to the entire board probably about two and a half weeks ago that Miss Miller sent me. So um, um, we've just got to dig in with those teachers and find out what they have and what they don't have. Okay. That's what we've got to do. Okay, but these teachers keep telling me that all year they've been speaking, you know, reaching out to her with the same request. I just I do not think we're doing a great job right now because we've drug our feet. So here we are. Mm -hmm. We're gearing up for next year, and I don't think we're where we should be. And we've put we've put we've we've reserved some of the information we shared. We re, we've reserved two hundred thousand dollars for K through one two materials, and so we we've got to figure out what do we need, what do we don't need, and then order it and then get it to the teachers, put it in their classroom. Um, because and be apparently, in how long? Well, I mean, apparently, according to this list, K one and two teachers have resources. They have things in their classroom that they can use. So we've got to dig at them with them personally. When you say you don't have resources, what does that mean? Do you not have paper? Do you not have books? Do you not have manipulatives? Do you not have crayons? What do you not have that you need? And then we need to dig in with them with that. We are here at budget. I'm so sorry. I know we are here at budget and we're here to talk about solely about numbers, but I think there comes a point where you can't be efficient with your numbers. Mm -hmm. If, But this is all like, they are using words like, um, what's that one? told you I gotten stopped in the mall and it's a uh, it's an education term and you're like oh yeah I hate those textbooks no <laughs> basils yes textbooks same okay. thing yeah the things that teacher ask me for I'm not mm -hmm. an educator y'all know that but they consistently use words leveled readers basils this and that well they keep asking for that and like mm -hmm. if we had one consistent voice in leadership it would have been oh you, you don't have that but you do have this can this get you back like I feel like it's so disjointed mm -hmm. and I they keep saying oh I've talked to Miss Miller I've reached out to her and you know all this and like I don't want to throw her under the bus but mm -hmm. like I am saying it has been a very consistent message and voice yeah. and pathway that they have told me they've used and I'm just disappointed that now six weeks out we're just now like oh but you have this well if they had all this why are this all these people that I think a lot of mm -hmm. I've seen them teach I've seen their outcomes they know what they're doing yeah. for them to think they have nothing there is a disconnect gotcha gotcha so, can't answer that question right now because well, what I'm reading on here, these are basils. So. Well, and if you hate basils, then our leadership needs to say, don't use that, use this. But mm -hmm. from what I understand, all these teachers are scrambling around using their own money, doing this. Everyone's reinventing the wheel. Yeah. And I feel like the way we're set up with the director of this and that, they should be giving guidance to make this a streamlined and fun efficient system. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have it, this is the time that we ask for it. But we don't even know what we got. Yep. Got you. But the outcome's still what it is. We haven't met with the teachers yet. We're, we're assembling those committees, so we haven't gotten together with them yet. So I don't know what the outcomes of that committee are yet. So I don't have that. But we're going to try to do it with current monies that we currently have in the budget. In summary, yes. I think y'all have drug your feet and not addressed a very consistent concern that has been the same message, voice, and intention mm -hmm. since the beginning of the year. And I'm appalled that it's middle of June. And y'all are still like, oh, we're going to get a committee. Mm -hmm. So, Understandable. My apologies. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, I'll get you in just a minute, Ms. Kinzer. I, Could we have a report from Ms. Miller by the next board meeting on whether they have or have not have the stuff they have? Progress. Sure. Pro and if they do not have the stuff they need, how quick can we expedite it and make sure the teachers get what they need for these students? June meeting, next Thursday, or July meeting, which we'll be meeting on can the 13th you do it by next Thursday? for work session. Do the best you can oh, by Ms. next. That's not Miss Miller. That's yeah, Miss Fisher. I have Miss Miller bring yeah. it. Do yeah. she can by next Thursday. Sure. We'll see what we can do. Thank you. Ms. Kinzer? I just want, I understand in, in the K through two, but I also mean for everybody. Uh, I, we've gone to a seven period day. I, when I was at the end of the year luncheon at Central, I sat with the librarians, happened to be, and I said, how's that affecting you textbook wise? She said, we're only gonna have classroom sets. We don't have, you know, have enough in several areas. 
So that's a concern too. I understand someday, somehow, we're gonna be all digital, but still there are, there are classes that need textbooks. They just, it, they always will. So I, that's my concern overall is, is, do we have enough budgeted to take care of that and to make sure that the high schools that go from uh, block to the seven period day have enough textbooks? Well, textbooks have been a sore point with me ever since I've came on the board. So we have to, I realize like you do that we're moving forward, but we have to make sure we have enough books. But we're getting a little bit off the track. Let's decide what we're gonna do with this budget because we have to make a vote on it sometime tonight in a special call meeting. And I don't wanna be here till quarter to 11. Exactly. Go ahead. Uh, I, I detail the quarter to 11 thing. Not gonna stay here with you guys that long. But I will say that um, I think that you, at, you know, you've been voicing this and you ask a specific person a question, what do you have? They responded to you with a list. I think more effectively, if you all could have more of an inventory to say each room has this, or and I know that seems very primitive, but it would get down to the nitty gritty and then therefore when you do see the people out, we could respond and say, well, each classroom has this, or we were told each you know person has that. Instead of a generalized answer that she gave you, it needs to be more of a breakdown, and then you know we'd know for sure we've got six of these, or we've got ten of these, or you know whatever. Yeah, for, from what I understand, those are books that were ordered for every single classroom during the adoption cycle. So every single classroom received those books. I think we are on topic if, if you're telling us we have $187,500 in excess of what you have budgeted in front of us that we can spend somewhere, maybe, maybe that's where it needs to. I'm, I think we are on topic here as to what to, what to budget. Are we not? Mr. Bates? I was just gonna say, I mean, for me, I guess, you know, I'm not a professional. I don't know, you know, what is best from an academic standpoint, you know, what would give us the most bang for a buck. And so that's where, you know, I think I've got to rely upon our professionals to let us know if we did add the roughly 180,000 back in based upon the commission's own estimate as far as the property tax. Um, Mr. Superintendent, as far as the items that got cut out of the keys, as far as the GP items, which of those items, if there was something that, from your own professional standpoint, you're reviewing this, would make the most, um, you know, impact as far yeah. as education goes that we would put back into the budget. Now, that being said, I also think that. Um, I'm a little bit concerned, you know, we originally we had 16 growth positions and I know that uh, there was some discussion about maybe we're overestimating that a little bit. I'm a little bit concerned where we took that, I think we took quite a bit of money away from that. Uh, we went from like 16 positions to maybe eight positions. And I'm a little bit concerned we're getting a little bit, cutting a little bit too close to the bone on that. Uh, in some ways I would like to see us, if we, if we do add some additional revenue that we replenish those, those instructional line just to make sure we've got that flexibility because when we're looking at the elementary school growth right now, I mean 10% growth at all the elementary schools, if those numbers are correct, we may have to hire quite a few teachers next year just to be able to stay within ratios. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what those ratios are, but I kind of feel like if maybe if the superintendent can give us some guidance as okay these are the things that from his professional standpoint I would recommend putting back in and then whatever's left over maybe we just add that back to the instructional line just to make sure we got plenty of flexibility yeah. there well I mean one of the things that I would definitely jump at is the district-wide RTI coordinator we're adding 42 part-time 120 day contract RTI positions so so that person would be critical in overseeing that work and make sure making sure that everything is is happening as it's supposed to be happening so so that's one that i would definitely jump at i possibly would also jump at one of the um work-based learning coaches uh under the special education line but then i'd, I'd feel comfortable reserving the rest just to be 100 percent sure that we're okay and so if we did if we added back the 
RTI coordinator, and what was the other it one? Was, it was at least one of the work-based learning coaches under special ed. They had asked for five of them um, at 165000 So that's 33000 So that's about 99000 Or no, 94000 sorry. And so that would leave roughly around 80000 yeah. still. That we could potentially, I mean, this is a discussion, just throwing out ideas we could potentially put back into the instructional line item. And we can always, if we have too much funding in that item, and when we get a report back that maybe there needs to be more materials or something like that, we can always make budget amendments and move that those funds later. But I, I really think that we need to, yes, I don't like to put a fluff. I don't want too much padding in budgets, but I am concerned that maybe we've cut it down a little bit too close to the bone on some of those things because we we are in a very uh big growth freight uh phase right now that we need to be able to yeah. be able to be uh limber to be able to keep up with that i would rather have a couple extra teachers or three four extra teachers than three four short mm -hmm. yeah of course because i mean you can always <clears throat> i don't know how you do it but you can always use the teacher as a substitute if you got an extra one laying around somewhere yeah Yes, true. Yeah. And like Mr. Bates said, the way we're growing, if you're almost a capacity or a capacity in a couple of schools and you get 10 more children to move in in a short period of time, mm -hmm. you're going to need a teacher because you have to split that class. You can only have so many kids in the class. True. So I'd rather have a, an abundance and be cautious instead of being caught light. Yep. So in any case, you gentlemen need to do what you're going to do to give us a final budget here shortly. Sure. Please. Gotcha. Any more questions or discussion? So, so Ms. Kenzer? when we do vote on the budget we're talking about, it would be to add the, uh, an RTI coordinator and a work based learning position, That's it, yeah. and the excess go into regular ed. And then the final figure that we're going to be asking from the county commission for our GP budget is what? A adding in the things that we just discussed. So if we added back the use the county's estimate on the property tax, how what would that make our revenue? number total total and that would be using for sales tax revenue, as far as local sales tax, that's using this year's number to project out for next year, and that's using for property tax, that's using the county's own estimate. And that's what our budget number would be. And we could actually, out of that number, we could add back a RTI coordinator as well as one of the work-based learning coaches and then add some additional funding to the instructional line. Okay. What's that? Um, Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. One seventy-five forty-four. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I like to talk about the, the keys, and a lot of what we have in it is, you know, we got a lot down here in maintenance, and and you know, I feel that. Instead of pulling stuff out of our GP, we should be putting things like our maintenance. A lot of the uh, the teachers that we have in, in the Keys budget should be in the, our regular GP budget because it's more than, you know, uh, from what I understand, this is our fund balance and it's a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, uh, Let's just take our, our two vehicles on our maintenance. 
you know, we got uh, $63,000 with two vehicles and uh, uh, two trailers. You know, I feel that that should fall under our maintenance department, that the people's going to be using those vehicles. You know, and uh, let's see, what else we got on here? Uh, like HVAC repair. Shouldn't that fall under maintenance instead of in the keys? And, and really, really what you see happening is because the county commission has not raised the amount of money that they've been giving to, given to schools, all that tax money that comes in that should have been, putting in, been put in the maintenance has now been rolled over to fund balance. So actually, if you really look at it, we're spending it on the back end versus spending it on the front end because we haven't been allowed to spend it on the front end. So that's, that's one way to look at it. I mean, we're, if you go back to our 10-year estimates, how far, how far under are we that we should have been funded, Mr. Parliament? We're about $3 million under. That's total funding. Um, on a 10-year estimate? About 1.3 from a local standpoint. If we, if we looked at our 10-year average, we would be asking for an additional 1.3 on top of the 2.3 that we're asking for now. Because when, when, when we look at a 10-year estimate, you've actually got less money from the county commissioner over the last 10 years than you should have, and, and, or than we should have. And the five-year estimate is almost exactly the same. So you can't, so they couldn't go back and say, well, something happened eight years ago that really isn't relevant now, because the five-year estimate is almost the exact same number. And it would be an additional $1.4 million of revenue if, if we use the five-year average. Okay, all right. Okay, and, and one other thing I was wanting to address here is, yes, uh, you know, our fu uh, furniture replacement. Mm -hmm. All right, last week, uh, if, I'm, if I'm remembering correct, there was $100,000 in it for furniture replacement. Yes. Now we're showing we took $100,000 out, but we still got $100,000 added into the peak column. We, I believe we had the $100,000 in the GP funded, and that was part of the cuts, but we moved it over to the one-time purchase. So we just moved it from the green column over to the pink column. But you're saying it's still in the blue column? Yeah, you got, yeah, got $100,000 in the blue column. You ignore got that. You got $100,000 in the pink column. Right. Ignore the blue column. Cause that, that was our attempt to, when we cleaned everything out, we moved it over to the blue, and then we decided to start moving back over. But until it was approved, we left it in both places so we could see what we were doing. So we're really just looking at the green and the pink column from a funding standpoint. It's tracking. <clears throat> Mr. Beaver, I, I agree with what you're saying, but you've been here long enough, and you know as well as I do, that's the reason we've both been fighting that we've been underfunded by for years, that they haven't given us enough. And that's why I always push, and I always will continue to push, we set the budget, we did our job, we worked very hard to do it. We understand you have a hard job, County Commission. You didn't want to get in the frying pan, yeah, but, you shouldn't have okay, got in the but, kitchen. All right, but what I'm looking at and talking to a lot of the commissioners, you know, they're having a hard time because they got a budget countywide and they've asked us to cut, we haven't cut. And so, you know, what are we gonna do when we go next week and they give it back to us and say, sorry. Well, I mean, you know, so, and, and I don't know if we've really made an attempt to, to, to show good faith, trying to make some cuts. But if you flip that coin over, Mr. Beaver, they ask us to show good faith and make cuts. We made cuts. I think we did our due diligence. And then all of a sudden they came by, come back and say, oh, by the way, you got to take back the buses. We're not going to pay for them anymore. In other words, you're asking me to take a pay cut, but you want me to do more work. Okay. In my, in my book, and that's just me personally, but in my book, it doesn't fly. Well, and I think you, if you look at the county as it grows and that revenue grows and our share of that, that's basically all we're asking for. I mean, I think our original budget was give us the growth plus give us 5% on top of that for sales tax and, and give us 
what we think is going to happen. And now we've dropped that back to we're not asking for what we think is going to happen. We're asking for what has already happened with no growth whatsoever. So, I mean, I kind of look at it as flip side. We have we have cut back from what we could legitimately be asking for. Well, and I think, too, we've got two different worlds we're dealing with. We've got our GP budget and what we're asking for there. And that, that can affect the county. I, I do think that we are showing a lot of due diligence. We're, you know, we're cutting uh, at least over half a million dollars out of GP at, out of our local funding request. But the as far as the fund balance goes, that's not really the county's funds. That's our funds. Uh, really, that in, in some respects, and, and generally I think they've, they've done good uh, very well in the past where they've accepted our uh, usage of the fund balance because it's not really their money they don't really care as long as we've set a budget as far as how to utilize that now it may be like we had some discussion last week when we get the final numbers as far as our fund balance goes if it's not as uh, maybe as good as what we're anticipating we may have to go back and look at some of those things like the trailers and things like that we may have to cut some of those things out uh, if it's not as good but it may be that when we get our fund balance our final numbers on june th uh, 30th it may be fine and and we don't have that right. as much of a concern but that is something i do think that warrants some additional discussion once right. we close out june 30th to have those solid numbers as to what our fund balance is and i think so. we discussed that even though there's 5.8 million dollars sitting there in that pink column for keys doesn't mean we have to spend the 5.8 million i mean that's all going to be based upon where we where we end up after the end of the year so I think at this point at that point that's where you make the cuts to that column well you, you know what I'm saying here is we're moving stuff out of the GP putting it in the fund balance and and you know uh, is that really what we want to set a precedence to do or do we want to put the items where they should be and then work our budget from there is what is what I'm saying now, I might, I, I might not understand what's going on. Well, and I agree with you, Mr. Beaver. I think probably, I, I think we need to begin that transition. There's a lot of things that we're funding out of our fund balance that really should be in our GP. Right. It should be a re reoccurring year-to-year -year funding. Like, like one big example is these RTI positions. Mm -hmm. That's something that I do not think should be a one-time thing I think right. that's something we need to have a long-term commitment on but it's one of those things the practical part of it we could all day we could take all those things out of the pink column we could shift them over into GP but then our revenue request goes up goes here way up, yeah. and then we could go up there and we could ask for it all day but they won't give it to us yeah. what they will tell us is don't ask for it on up front wait till it goes into fund balance then you can spend it and, and but we got to get out of that mindset I, I agree I think and I think maybe we're beginning that process to getting to making an accurate budget because that's something we haven't done and, and, have and now we're, I, think, I think we're now getting closer to that like but really the budget that they disapproved and sent back was a very realistic budget the budget that we're getting ready to potentially send back over there is an unrealistic budget the economy is not going to flatline next year. There's no factual basis for that. Everything from a factual standpoint is that our economy has been growing by at least, uh, our revenue has been growing by at least 5% per year. And so our funding next year that's going to come in is going to be 5% more than what we're budgeting right now. But they wouldn't approve that. So we're, we're locked in to this position where we have to, we have to do what we can under those uh, constraints. Yeah, Mr. Bieber, I agree with you. and, and I've been saying that for years, and it's like Mr. Bates says. Every time you try and do that, you say, well, the county commission won't approve this, the county commission. Everything should be in the GP budget. We should give them a budget and say, this is what we need, period, end of discussion. I think we work very hard on our budget, very hard. We've got what a lot of us consider bare bones and things that we've taken out that we shouldn't take out, just the simple ones that you mentioned. But in order to get it to the county commission and try and get a vote on it, we have to do things that none of us like to do. And 
This would not be the first time that I voted against the, when a budget was sent back to try and cut it, that I voted against cutting the budget. It won't be the last time. I don't believe in cutting the budget. Any more discussion on the GP? Then let's go to the capital, capital budget and see what that is finally. Just to help move things along, when I was looking at it, and maybe you all can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically it's the same capital budget we approved before, except instead of having all the buses, we've just gone Five. with just the growth buses. There's yes. no request to ask for buses that we reduce our walks on. Yeah, that's the 47038. Yes. Now, so technically, we would be reducing the budget that they have not mm -hmm. really passed on yet. I think right now they just moved it uh, for further review till next week until they were going to be looking at what kind of flexibility they had on their debt service. Yeah. So they have not technically then not sent this budget back to us yet, the capital budget. But you all are proposing to make those reductions in the buses. Yes. Can we live with the reductions in those buses? I realize but we won't go to a no-walk zone if we don't get the buses. But. Well, th well, there's also another impact as well. There's also this five bus drivers that we would have funded in the GP. So we've already pulled those five bus drivers out. So if we leave those other five buses in, then that does impact the GP because we've got to add those bus drivers back in. So that's one of the reasons why we're comfortable sticking with the five growth because we have the five growth bus, dr bus drivers and aids in there for special ed. Okay, and if we grow, you have to add three more bus routes yes oh what do you mean if, if we grow I, I don't we don't we don't know how many bus routes we'll have to add we don't know so how many spare buses do we have <sighs> I think I thought I thought Stan said we had two two we'd have we'd have two spare buses is what we would have but but these buses are for growth Remember, the other five buses were bring, to bring the walk zone, walk zone down to, or sorry, the parent responsibility zone down to 0.5 right. or 0, 0.0. So this is just for growth. And it was my understanding from Mr. Behrman that um, we actually, the spare buses we've had to put into service. Yes. So our backup buses are being used as basically permanent buses right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if they haven't sent that back, refused that budget yet, I don't see why we should do any reductions. I would say send it back to them just the way it came, just the way we sent it to them the first time. So but what do you again, want to do about the bus would, drivers on the GP side, though? Yeah, we would have to add the bus drivers back in on the GP side. Yeah. Which, mean it, which means it would reduce that $90,000, that $93,000, I don't want to say cushion, but that $93,000 window would get smaller because we'd have to take the bus drivers and the aides out of that. Go ahead, Mr. Bates. I was going to say, but I mean, if they did approve the funding for the additional buses, that is something else that we could potentially then look at on a, maybe just a year contract for we could. a bus driver or something. I mean, if they did provide that funding for us. We so, could I do mean, that. We could, we could figure something out if they do provide that. But I lean a little bit more towards Mr. Pennings, I, I, I think that um, if that's the budget still over there, they have not rejected that budget yet. I think we I think we ought to wait and see what they do first before we start making uh, cuts. And we could always make cuts later, depending upon what they do. I, I totally agree. Mr. Atkinson? Do you, uh, Mr. Superintendent, do you feel comfortable with these with this bus number here? 
If, if we're only talking about growth, then I'm comfortable with the number. But if, if as a board, you guys want to eliminate that parent responsibility zone, then we need those other five buses. But how much would that add back to the GP? Uh, I, was just, I was just going back to a previous budget doc where we had that in here. I think it's about $111,000, $114,000. Is that for uh, for personnel? Yeah. Okay. But if we're talking about buses, do you have an older capital doc? Well, Mr. with this amount, you saying we would have two spare buses? Still. Still. Yes. I mean, okay. Mr. Parliament, you're saying that if we do need the additional drivers to reduce the walk zone, that would be an impact of about 111,000. So that's close to the cushion that we're potentially putting back into the budget. Yeah, you're putting 93.5 back. So, okay. You have some more, Mr. Atkinson? There's no more questions on the capital budget, seeing we can't take a vote, unless anybody has any objections, we'll go to the special called meeting. Going, going back to your question, it went from 473 to 908, 800, if we were to, re if we were to eliminate the walk zones. So it's, al it's almost an additional 400 something thousand plus the 100 or so thousand for the drivers. So that's what we're looking at. like to see the walk zones eliminated. I think it's too much. I think if we can keep that in there, we should. Okay, I'd like to call a special called meeting to order then. Let's have the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. to planning horizons in process school starts in 1.5 months questions and let's move to the budgets oh yeah sorry about that I have a motion to adopt the agenda second Motion made and second to adopt the agenda.
Yes, we had talked about uh, putting the bus drivers back in. Are we looking at that or or not? I think I would be leaning towards, I mean, we wouldn't necessarily add anything at this time, but we are potentially the what we're going to be considering is going to be adding some cushion to our budget back. So we could always come back and look at that at a later time. I'd say depending on how the capital budget goes at the right. at the county commission, yeah, we can take it up at that time. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion yes, on sir. our general purpose budget. I would make a motion that uh, we amend the prior budget that we proposed. Uh, we would submit a revised budget, total revenue and, and expenditures in the amount of ninety eight million one hundred seventy thousand five hundred forty four. It would be based upon revenue of sales tax revenue based upon our projections of what we were going to receive this year. So it would be based upon a no growth economy for next year. And we would utilize the property tax estimate that the county has provided to us for our property tax revenue. Part of that motion would be we would add back the RTI coordinator position that was previously proposed to be eliminated from the keys and we would also add one work -based, based learning position and the rest of the additional revenue that would be added would go into our instructional line but I think even with this proposal this is still would be a net reduction of a, a over a half a million dollars to our previous uh, local funding request so that would be my that would be my motion on the GP I will second that motion okay. any discussion on the motion Ms. Powers we just restate it to be sure I understood please so we would actually uh, this is similar to what the superintendent uh, recommended to us but we would be uh, using the county's estimates on their local property tax and so using that that would make the total revenue ninety eight million one hundred and seventy thousand five hundred forty four the positions that you were so we would be using what the uh, superintendent recommended as far as the uh, keys budget reductions but the only change was we would add back the RTI position that he proposed to be eliminated, RTI coordinator, and then also we'd add back one of the work-based learning positions. And this is based upon the recommendations that he made earlier. Thank you, thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? If not, we're ready to vote. Okay, as far as the capital budget goes, we're not making any changes in that, so that passed before. I don't believe we even have to vote on the capital project budget because it passed before. And in looking at my little computer here, it says the next motion needs to be one to adjourn. Mr. Bates made the motion. Ms. Power second the motion. All in favor say aye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, and what I'll do is I'll work with Eric. We'll get all the documents finalized, and I'll send them to the county commission so that they'll, they'll have them. And the county commission's meeting is when, Chris? Tuesday, Tuesday at? 6, at 4.30. 4.30, okay. Yes, Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, 
Mr. Superintendent, I was just going to point out, if you, you all can, in your presentation, if you all can help them understand the revenue that in this budget that we're requesting is based upon sales tax that we already have line next year. Yes. We, we, I will make that blatantly tax. clear. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Maybe maybe I'll do memes and gifs on the screen where 